I do hope you'll permit me this one geeky moment. By your command. <laughs> yeah, I just couldn't resist that one. And before anyone asks, no, to this day I still have yet to see one single episode of the new Battlestar Galactica. Why? Well, at first it was because I just loved the old show so much I couldn't stand the fact that they remade it and changed so many things, but you already know that. Unless, of course, this is the first video of mine you've seen, in which case, hey, how's it going? Welcome to my channel. Hope you enjoy your stay. The other reason was I thought, well, they're putting them all out on DVD. Why don't I just wait and get all the seasons on DVD and then we can watch it that way? Then I just found out recently there's talk of putting the whole thing out on Blu-ray. So, I mean, come on, grand sweeping epic sci-fi and high definition? That's what the format was made for! Annette and I were thinking, we'll just wait for the Blu-rays and get the whole damn set when it comes out, sit down and have a four-season and couple-of-movie festival of the new Battlestar Galactica and just watch the whole thing in one go. So don't worry, I'll get my new Galactica fix at some point. But of course, we're not here today to talk about the new series. We're here to talk about where it all began. Now this, of course, is the deluxe edition that came out a few years ago called Battlestar Galactica, the complete epic series. Around the same time, or, well, actually shortly after this, uh, Buck Rogers in the 21st Century came out, also with the subtitle, the complete epic series. They just like to add epic in there for sci-fi shows. I don't know why. So this is basically a very slick box. Oh, it's upside down. There you go. That's upside down. <laughs> there you go. And, oh, big surprise is on the other side, too. Now, I grew up with this show very much. I mean, this was very much a part of the original Star Wars generation of television. I mean, this came out on television in 1978, which was the year after the first Star Wars premiered in the theaters. So, I would have been six years old when this first aired on television. I hadn't seen the series uh, for quite a while until it was repeated on the uh, Canadian Space Channel, which is like the Canadian version of the Sci-Fi Network. The difference being the Space Channel doesn't actually cut anything out when they're showing old shows. You know how sometimes you'll be watching an old show and they'll cut out like a se several minutes of footage usually to make way for new commercials. This is when they put a show into syndication for repeats on different networks and so forth. The Sci-Fi Channel in the States usually uses syndication prints for their repeats. Space Channel, I don't know how they did it, but they got their hands on the original network versions of Battlestar Galactica, so they were showing the original uncut episodes with commercials, just not as many per hour as they were on, on the Sci-Fi Channel repeats. So that was really cool. So I actually taped them all when they were on, and uh, it was literally the first time I had seen the series in its entirety since it originally aired in 1978. Needless to say, when I heard that it came out on DVD, I was very excited. This came out actually on DVD, I guess sort of to help promote the new series originally, because the new series, uh, original miniseries, was just about to air. So they put this out on DVD as a pretty obvious cross-promotion. But uh, as a longtime fan of the old show, I had no complaints because I was just happy to have the old show. And that's really why I wanted to do this particular DVD review at this particular point in time. The new series is currently drawing to a close, and given that this was originally released when it was just starting, I don't know, it just seemed appropriate somehow. This is a pretty cool package. I mean, you got like, look at, look at that. It's beautiful, shiny cover. There's no light or anything in here. You know, those who know the show know that there's usually a light that oscillates back and forth there. But you do have kind of a lenticular thing going on. Wow, you know what? I never noticed that before. <laughs> I never saw that before until I showed it to you just now. So they do basically have the light in there as a lenticular motion thing. My god, I've had this set for like three years and I never noticed that before. <laughs> anyway, way cool set. Let's take a look at the innards, shall we? Oh, hey, you can see my reflection. Hi, how's it going? Hey, hi. <laughs> just like in true Cylon fashion, just like in the show, they made the, the cover of this super reflective. Now this, of course, is a full, like, mock-up uh, faceplate of 
a Cylon, essentially. Um, which is really cool. So, I mean, it looks really good and it's very impressive. But, of course, the problem with it is it's so huge and so, like, non-conformist to one's normal, uh, you know, shelves. <laughs> it doesn't really sit on the shelf comfortably. But that aside, it's still, uh, it's still a very cool set uh, to have. I mean, it definitely looks impressive if you display it properly. And I've had a lot of friends come over who, who like me, grew up with the original Battlestar Galactica, see this thing on the shelf, and they're like, Oh, man, where'd you get that? What was even better is we got this cheap. Like, we got it on sale. I think when it came out, it was originally about 130 bucks, and we got it for, I think, uh, 30 <laughs> So this, of course, is the complete Battlestar Galactica the original 70s series. Um, so we'll take a look on the back. There is nothing on the back. I think there used to be a paper um, sheet on the back. I usually take those off and insert them into the, uh, the set itself. So if we pop it off, pop off the uh, front here. It's just black on the inside. The first thing you'll notice, aha, here we are. Yeah, I knew it. This was the sheet that was on the back. <laughs> which gives you the uh, skinny on everything. Now, the thing that irritates me is you see on the cover, it shows all single-sided discs. They're all almost all double-sided discs in the actual set. Not a big fan of those. I find, it, historically speaking, the double-sided dual-layer discs tend to have problems a lot of the time. Fortunately, we got lucky with the Battlestar Galactica set. We've had no playback problems at all with this, so I was really happy about that. So the first thing, uh, of course, is you have the collector's book, which uh, which is a great resource because uh, it gives you a little spiel from uh, the uh, beginning of every episode, and uh, it gives you sort of a summarized breakdown of what's on each disc. Um, now the thing that's really interesting about this, and then it gives you detailed summaries of each episode with uh, with photos to go along with it. So, quite nice. Quite nice indeed. Um, just flipping through here. Do, 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 do. What was I going to say? Yeah, the, uh, the cool thing about this set that I was really, really impressed by. Now, this is a set, uh, this is a show that basically lasted one season. Okay, and this is, this is the complete season. And in case anybody's wondering, no, Galactica 1980 is not included in this set. But it is available separately. I have it. Maybe I'll grab it and give you a quick look at it as a bonus. Uh, so there, of course, is Apollo and Starbuck, before Starbuck got a sex change operation for the new series. <laughs> Adama, and a look at some Cylons there. Cool robotic killing machine characters. Great stuff. So there you go. So that's the, the gist of it. So the thing that struck me as really cool, okay, this is a series that lasted one season, and they have so many extras on this. I, I consider myself a big fan of this of this show. I mean, I essentially, this is one of many science fiction shows from the 70s that I kind of grew up with. There was this, and there was Buck Rogers, and, uh, you know, things like The Incredible Hulk and Knight Rider, which aren't as hardcore sci-fi as this, but, I mean, still, I classify them as sci-fi uh, to some degree. But uh, this has commentaries. It has deleted scenes from just about every single episode, um, and alternate scenes from just about every single episode, and it's got just buttloads and buttloads of stuff. I can't even begin to go through everything that's on here. Yeah, they got, uh, I guess they just have, yeah, they just have a commentary on the first, uh, uh, story, the three-part, uh, premiere. And then after that, they go into, uh, they have deleted scenes from just about every single episode. Um, but like I say, I mean, I consider myself a pretty big fan of the series, and even I haven't gone through all the extras. There's just that much stuff. It's almost like getting another half a season. There's so many deleted scenes and behind-the-scenes footage. So inside we have this custom-formed uh, foam, nice soft foam, and it's padded on the bottom as well to further uh, protect the case. And then inside we have this massive, thick, gatefold case. Okay? Now it's six discs, but as I say, they're double-sided. So anyway, we open it up. We'll open up this half first because it's a little too big to show you everything. So yeah, see? That's, that's not what was on the back, and I was... See, does that look like double-sided on the back, the discs there? No. But, uh, yeah, that was my one my one and only complaint. Because they, they could have, well, I guess if they had done it as single-sided, it would have been 12 discs, but whatever. Anyway, so inside you basically have your discs, and then underneath the, uh, 
the discs, you have some some pictures, which are quite nice. It's always nice to have pictures from Battlestar Galactica. I just always love the ship design, and yeah, it looks like some of this is concept art actually, which is pretty cool. So there you go. So that's the first half, and then the second half. Yes, there's really not a lot of swag in this one. It's not like as deluxe inside as it is outside. <laughs> so if we take another... Oh. Okay, two complaints. They're in the cases a little bit too tight, so be careful when you're taking the discs out. So, there we go. But yeah, a little while ago, Netta and I basically had a, a festival of these. God, I really... It's like I'm afraid to take them out because I feel like I'm going to break them. But, uh, yeah, so anyway, we're not going to take out the last one. You can buy the set and take it out your own damn self. <laughs> but we had a festival. We watched, like, all 24 episodes in a matter of three days or something like that. Or, well, maybe, like, a week. And I uh, just had a great time. Uh, I know a lot of people say, like, oh, well, the new series has a lot more depth to it and deeper storyline. And that may be so. But, I mean, to be fair, the new series has gone for four seasons. So it's had more time to develop. And the original series was plagued by a lot of network interference and such. I don't think it had anywhere near the support that the new series has with the support of the Sci-Fi Channel. So unfortunately, they had to make a lot of concessions along the way. I mean, if you watch the first half of the original series and then the last few episodes, it's some really good stuff. Like, they obviously had a, a pretty cool plan for it. But they, the network kept forcing them to tone it down, tone it down, tone it down, until in the end it bore little to no resemblance to what it originally started out as. And then they did Galactica 1980, which was just, you know, total little kitty fair. So, there you go. So that's Battlestar Galactica, the complete epic series. And you want to have a look at Galactica 1980, don't you? I'll be right back. To give you a comp comparison in size, the Galactica 1980 set is a typical two-disc slim pack edition. It's a little thicker than a single DVD case and about the same height. So to give you an idea of size difference, there you go. <laughs> so you can see just how massive this thing is by comparison, okay? So let's take a look here. So this is Galactica 1980. Galactica, yeah, Galactica 1980, this was two years after the original series. Um, but it takes place about 20 years after the original series. Much of the original cast is not in it. There's just a couple of cast members. Most fans generally are of the consensus that if you're a fan of the original series, you owe it to yourself not to be a fan of this one. <laughs> I've heard some Galactica fans t call this the worst television series of all time. Well, I don't know that I would call it the worst television series of all time. I mean, I've seen some pretty bad television. I would put, you know, Full House and Saved by the Bell <laughs> ahead of Galactica 1980 for that. Sorry to any fans of those. Maybe it was just a little after my time, but... No, what am I kidding? They sucked. Anyway, Galactica 1980. The original Black Battlestar Galactica's final season. Disc 1, Disc 2. Simple as that. They didn't even put any effort into making different covers. So basically there was only 10 episodes and there's 5 per disc. And uh, I don't believe... Yes, and they did them as single-sided dual layer. Thank you Universal for finally seeing the light. Now one thing that is cool actually is this uh, artwork inside. And uh, like that. Yeah, generally the, the fans are, are sort of of the mindset that like, oh yeah, Galactica 1980, that doesn't officially exist in the Galactica continuity, and uh, like that. But honestly, I don't think it's all bad. It's, it's a bit of a guilty pleasure. There are some cool aspects to it, like uh, the flying motorcycles. Everybody likes the flying motorcycles. But, um, and then of course the only episode that they consider of any worth whatsoever is the final episode which you probably can't even read. Anyway, it's called The Return of Starbuck. And basically, uh, it features the long-awaited return of fan-favorite Starbuck, played by Dirk Benedict. And uh, you get to discover the final fate of his character, at least. So even though the fates of all the other characters are kind of left up in the air, you do at least get to find out what happened to Starbuck. So that was kind of cool. So that makes for a nice kind of denouement to the original series. And uh, most fans consider that one the only 1980 episode worth watching. But myself, I, I enjoy cheese. And I was just happy to have some more Galactica. 
even if it wasn't quite up to par with the old ones. Galactica 1980 and Battlestar Galactica the Complete Epic Series. If you want the full, complete, total experience of the original 70s and 80s Galactica, you need go go no further than this. It has more than you will probably ever want to see. <laughs> so there you go. In case you haven't been paying attention or watching this review with your eyes open, Battlestar Galactica, the complete epic series. Now, one last thing I wanted to mention is uh, this was actually released in two versions. This is the original release, uh, the deluxe packaging with the, the full almost life-sized Cylon face on it. And most, most people have this set, and most collectors consider this one the one to have. It's not exactly hard to find, but it is rarer than it used to be these days. So you could probably still find it for, you know, around 50 bucks or so. But it is starting to fetch collector's prices because it's not as widely available as it used to be. Now that said, they did re-release it, uh, like the contents of the set, in a normal-sized uh, extra thick digipack, much like the digipack that's inside the set, but with uh, kind of a mock-up of this cover. So it has the Cylon face on the cover, but it's just a like an artwork version of it, rather than the full uh, 3D raised one. So some people prefer that one because it fits a little more nicely on a typical DVD shelf. But if you're looking for the deluxe experience, you might want to get this one instead. Otherwise, as far as I'm aware, the contents are exactly the same. It's just in a smaller uh, you know, more standard sized package. Oddly enough, the smaller version is more expensive. Like it actually retails for a higher price than the deluxe version, which I found really odd, and I don't quite understand why. So there you go. Battlestar Galactica, the complete epic series, and Galactica 1980, the complete not quite epic series <laughs> in their entireties. So that's the end of my Battlestar Galactica, the complete epic DVD review. I don't really have much more to say than I already have. So, hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you next time. Until then, sayonara.